It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. We've got the uh, live Deerfield cam up this time. Uh, this is the underwater cam at Deerfield Beach right up the road from my store, uh, a little bit north of us. Um, the next pier up, actually, and uh, quite frankly, I like this pier better than I like our own pier, but I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move into uh, uh, today's topic, which is precious metals, of course, <laughs> and see what's going on here. Got a couple things I want to talk about, too. I want to talk about, uh, uh, you know, I was uh, talking about COMEX and the uh, manipulation of gold and silver markets this week and the lack of regulation uh, or, or the uh, regulatory agencies uh, are not doing their job. Uh, and a couple other things we're going to get into. I want to talk about also what the best deals out there in gold and silver right now. I'm going to do a quick rundown, try to make this report actually quick uh, because I have to get my peeps off to a coin show that's happening up in Lakeland, Florida uh, starting uh, today. So if you live in the Lakeland, Florida area, uh, the Collectorama show is happening up there. And we do a lot of coin shows as well. Uh, besides precious metals, uh, rare coins, paper money, and collectibles, and uh, jewelry and estate stuff, we do a lot of a little bit of everything here as well. Uh, but again, my specialties are rare coins, precious metals, and paper money. And uh, but you know what, rare uh, saying you're a precious metal expert is uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> I could teach someone to be a precious metals reseller. I won't say an expert in determining markets and stuff like that, but I can teach someone to be a pretty uh, proficient uh, precious metal uh, reseller uh, in a short period of time. It's not rocket science. Uh, but figuring out where it's going is not rocket science either. Pretty damn easy. Let's get into it right now. I like what I'm seeing with precious metals. Uh, uh, a lot of strength here on Wednesday. Does that mean we're going to see some markets knock down Thursday and Friday? I don't know. Let's see. However, I think that... Uh, uh, there's been really a big tug of war going on here as far as the uh, uh, prices going on the upside and downside. And uh, it, gold is just kind of staying in this uh, above 1750 range, all right? Uh, they were talking about uh, getting knocked down below 1750, 1720, then maybe 1680. I mean, it's not the end of the month yet, not, you know, not the end of the year yet. So, <clears throat> you know, that may still happen. However, it just looks awfully strong. It gets knocked down, it gets back up, gets knocked. I mean, that's what gold and silver do anyway. But uh, uh, on the short term, um, you know, it, and look at it now, 1783. Let's see what the high and low here was. And that kind of surprises me, almost a high of 1800 there. Uh, and silver has really been the one that's been knocked down the most. But we know who does it, why they do it, and how they do it. Uh, and then again, we'll get that in a moment here. Uh, 1781.49 being the low. We're just a little bit off that low. Uh, 1793.68 being the high. Again, for all intents and purposes, we're right near that psychological $1,800 mark. And again, you know, my, you know, we've talked about psychological numbers. For some reason, uh, in gold, 1800, 1900, 2000, those are like psychological numbers uh, that, that uh, once it breaks, it seems to move forward. Or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what the uh, numbers that they use on chart guys that trade with charts and stuff like even numbers too or something. Uh, but it is a psychological number, and we're not, we've not hit the 1800 yet, but damn, we're right there for all, again, all intents and purposes, and we'll be way past this down the road here as well. Uh, silver, 22.34 a low, 22.58 a high. Uh, again, currently just sitting a little bit off that low last night. And uh, platinum, um, not a lot of action there, 1950, 1968, sitting around 1950. All these metals are a great buy, folks. I mean, uh, you know, it's, I just do these daily videos here and talk about what the daily gold prices are, movements. Uh, uh, but it's really meaningless in a long time. These daily movements only provide you an opportunity to buy the dips, in my opinion. If you're watching, if you're already bought in, who cares? Don't even look at spot prices. I mean, ultimately, down the road here, uh, if you buy gold at these levels, you're going to look back one day and say, holy smokes, man. Remember when gold was below 2000 and silver was below 30 and, and platinum was below 1000 bucks? And I actually think you're going to say that with a, a lot higher numbers, too. I think you're going to, one day we're going to say, remember when platinum, silver, and gold, or silver was below 50? or below 100, uh, you're, you're going to say that if you live long enough. And I'm not saying you got to live 100 years to do this. I, I think this is, uh, you know, in the next decade or so at the most or less uh, that you'll be saying these things. Uh, and I think it's sooner than later. I hate to pick a short-term number, but, you know, if you look at the march of gold and silver, you know, the march upwards, it's just, you know, it's, it's higher highs and uh, uh, higher lows uh, consistently in these markets. Uh, last year, uh, silver, and again, the reason silver got so badly monkey hammered, monkey hammered, <laughs> monkey hammered last year was, uh, again, with the COMEX, the big COMEX uh, uh, commercial 
commercial short positions that have done that. They're in a huge losing position. I think Ted Butler had mentioned um, at $30 an, uh, an ounce, they were in a huge losing position. At $25 an ounce, uh, they were still losing about, what, $10 billion dollars or something uh, collectively in their short positions unless they were able to lay those positions off. And this is what you're seeing silver getting monkey hammered so low. It, it's, it's, a, it's a colluded, you know, there's a lot of collusion going on here between the CME uh, and uh, as I said before, I believe the CFTC is either uh, complicit or they're inept or maybe a little bit of both because if they can't see what's happening in the silver markets as clear as a nose on their faces, then they are inept or again complicit or maybe both as I said. Uh, let's take a look at the 24-hour uh, charts and see what's happening here. And Of course, I know where silver gets monkey hammered at. The most it's going to be, oh, there's gold prices right there, and we can see the monkey hammering starts in the New York NYMEX markets, which is the COMEX markets. Uh, and I'm sure gold uh, prices get monkey hammered just as much as silver. I'm more familiar, uh, and, uh, can, more familiar with how silver gets monkey hammered, but both of these metals are uh, manipulated. Uh, and as I've always said, of course, uh, Everything in your life is manipulated, but if you don't play, you can't win. You just got to know how the game is played and how to win it and who the players are and uh, how the casino rigs the game, okay? Casino could be Comex market. Casino could be the Globex market. Casino could be the London market. The casino can be a government. Of course it's rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And again, if you know how the game is rigged, you can certainly win. Um, so here you go, Comex, on the Comex market. Overnight markets look like gold was kind of holding steady in the 1780 range, and then boom, <laughs> right there in the New York COMEX markets, of course. Uh, and there's no good reason for this other than, and really, in my opinion, it, these markets are just uh, uh, artificial monkey hammered, uh, mostly. And I believe the stock market's the same way. Uh, what, what keeps that stock market alive? Just just money continually being pumped into it. There are no fundamentals there. It's just continual money from the Fed. This is the greatest bubble of all time, one of the greatest uh, uh, credit-fueled by the Fed uh, bubbles of all time. And when this fucker bursts, it's all over, folks. Trust me on this. Uh, well, I won't say it's all over, but uh, you're going to see gold prices. Well, first gold may get really banged hard, so we'll get banged hard. Uh, and we've talked about the reason why that will happen. Uh, however, you will not be able to buy physical at those low prices, and you will start to see the gold and silver prices just start to rocket upwards after that. Um, let's take a look at the 24-hour spot prices. And, of course, where does the monkey hammer occur? Let's take that line for New York right here. Oh, they even do it in pink for us now. Uh, take a look at that. You know, sideways markets overnight, a little bit down. Well, actually down a little bit, 22.45 it looks like in overnight markets. Touching below that 20.30 level. Uh, and then kind of uh, tapering off there. Um, I suspect, you see this down line right here? Um, again, I'm always curious, did that happen in Globex, London, or Hong Kong? Those markets are apparently open during that time. Well, i got to look and see what time those markets. I know Globex is a 24-hour market. If this down line right here happened in the Globex market, you know it's the uh, Comex crooks, uh, the big central, or not central, but the big commercial banks uh, uh, um, banging that downward. And uh, it looks like the same thing here in New York Nine. I, I suspect that this trade or whatever caused uh, this downward trend in silver last night was done on New York Globex markets, crooked markets they are. And uh, same thing with New York NYMEX. Again, this is my opinion uh, that these markets are uh, crooked and fixed and uh, uh, the COMEX allows this. And Well, anyways, gosh, I sound like a broken record. Uh, all right, let's just move on to something different. Let's see what markets are doing out there as far as gold, I mean, not gold and silver, but other markets, uh, bigger markets. <laughs> Uh, Dow, just like it's tapered off a little bit today, Dow and the S&P and the uh, NASDAQ has tapered off slightly here and uh, not much to look at here. We'll, we'll kind of move along. Let's see what the, bit, uh, the Bitcoin is doing here. And uh, Bitcoin looks like it's taking a little bit of dive here as well. Um, I don't see a lot of volatility in that market, that's for damn sure. If you like volatility and you, and you like casinos, I mean, here's a great casino to play in right now, probably the biggest one out there. Uh, again, as far as uh, volatility and as far as up and down markets, yeah, this is the kind of market you can get rich quick on if you time it right. Uh, unfortunately, it's also the kind of market where you can just lose everything. You know, um, Bitcoin and these markets do not have any longevity on the historic timeline of investments, or uh, you know, if you can call it an investment. To me, it's just a very volatile. Um, Casino game, I guess I should say. But again, that's my opinion. Time will tell how long these things, if they end up staying around and lasting. Uh, what else are we going to look at? You know, I've been talking about the greatest bubble of all time, the credit fuel. And a lot of people like to look at, uh, I mean, 
even uh, the, the monkey hammering done by the big commercial banks and uh, allowed by Comex and the CME group, uh, who, who runs the Comex casino, uh, even with that happening, uh, ultimately, you know, they can only do this on a short-term basis, keep the prices down, and at some point it's going to blow up in their faces, and everybody knows that. I mean, they, even uh, Ted Butler and uh, uh, I think the Wall Street Silver videos and uh, uh, all those other people talk about uh, uh, the same thing, that it's going to blow up in their faces one day, and it'll be because of physical demand. Uh, the uh, Currently, and for years and years and years, and because of COMEX, uh, the, the paper markets, which would be the tail, have been wagging the dog, the dog being the physical markets. But at some point, uh, the physical markets, which is the dog, is going to uh, snap that tail right off it. You know, uh, <laughs> well, this is what, we are in the greatest bubble of all time. This has everything to do with us coming off the gold standard and uh, going into a completely fiat currency in the 1970s when Nixon uh, famously said we're all Keynesians now and uh, closed the gold window, uh, officially closed the gold window. Again, uh, longest surviving fiat currency in history, I believe the United States is, so we are the experiment right now. So really, here is the most important chart you can look at, and here's where, like me, when I see these down days and I see gold and silver go down, I don't panic, I don't worry about it. I get a little pissy sometimes, but generally I don't worry about it because I know where the ultimate destination is. The ultimate destination is a moon, except this is a roller coaster ride to the moon, and you're going to have some big valleys some peaks and valleys along that trip to the moon, but the ultimate destination is upwards towards the moon. But again, uh, if you get focused and you get too hung up with these, uh, this monkey hammering that's happening in COMEX, and it's been happening for decades and decades, um, which is good, again, for you physical stackers out there that are buying the physical stuff and putting it away. Uh, as you know, I recommend that you do not have anyone hold your gold. I don't look, I don't care if it's your grandmother or whomever. I don't care how trustworthy they are, what great program they have, whether they're offering to pay you to store their gold or your gold. Don't do it. Keep the gold yourself. That's a whole different uh, uh, topic, though. And again, we've talked about that so many times. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. Uh, but here is the real issue. Uh, the real, the real charts you need to look at when you want to look at ultimately where gold and silver are going to go. And as I said, to the moon. Um, you see all these different charts right here. Here is the one right here. This is one of them. This is why. And again, nothing to do with silver stackers, gold stackers. I mean, it is in a way. Okay, I shouldn't say that, but uh, this is what makes COMEX, uh, the COMEX crooks, uh, 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 irrelevant in the long term. This right here, which is the gold price and U.S. dollar correlation to 10 years. Look at this chart. Look at almost, if you inverted this chart over, it would lay on top of each other almost identical. Uh, I mean, there are some areas where it crosses up here, but no less. Um, take a look, 2012, there's our big bull market right there. Look at gold, 1646. It was actually higher than that. Uh, where is that high? Um, we were, hmm, I think they adjust this for inflation or something like that because it's really not showing the high. But, but you can get an idea. Look at the dollar value right there and look, look at the dollar value here as gold's making that next leg up. Uh, and, and this also, does this make you not wonder if governments directly intervene as GATA.org talks about governments directly intervene into the price of gold uh, and uh, drive the price of gold down using the BIS. And, and again, this is different than how the price of silver is driven down. Uh, GATA.org contends, and a lot of other contends, and I would tend to agree with them, that uh, central bankers do knock down the price of gold, um, and they, they do it through biz and uh, other uh, secret ways. <laughs> and the reason they do it, because gold is a canary in the coal mine. Coal mine. If gold prices just start to rocket up, that's a signal that the dollar is in for a major uh, uh, trouncing. Uh, so is the economy overall. So there is belief in the system out there that gold is purposely kept down by governments, uh, not governments, but by uh, central bankers, uh, which is completely different than the uh, facts that we know or what we know of is uh, the commercial banks that hold down the price of silver, okay? Uh, totally kind of different uh, entities uh, uh, if you read GATA.org and then you read uh, 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 Ted Butler and such. Um, on one side, gold's being manipulated again by central banks, and then on the uh, uh, on the silver, it's being manipulated by commercial banks and COMEX, uh, or COMEX allowing it to happen. But the the most important chart you could look at in any of these charts right here, Dow to gold, oil to gold, silver to gold, uh, is going to be. Well, I'll show you another one. Gold prices and U.S. dollar cor correlation. Again, look at that chart right there. And as long as we are on a fiat dollar. 
gold will continue to climb. As long as the dollar continues to lose its buying power, which it has done continuously since the 1970s, or probably even earlier, actually since 1913, if you think about it. Uh, but uh, uh, it's been accelerated. What we're seeing is accelerated uh, uh, decline in the value of the dollar, the accelerated uh, decline in the buying power of the dollar. That's what we're seeing right now uh, because our governments and our, our uh, officials out there are, have even gotten stupider and doubled down on stupid. Uh, but no less, let me show you the other chart that's real important to us. Uh, uh, people that look at gold and we don't worry about these short-term manipulations. We see them simply as an opportunity to buy more at a lower price because ultimately they can't, they can't hold this uh, house together here. It's going to blow apart. Uh, again, the economic house I'm talking about. Uh, where is that other chart? I want to say gold price and U.S. dollar correlation. And give me one second here. Uh, this, uh, great charts, by the way. This is a ma macro trend. Uh, and I'll skip back, so in case you've not seen this uh, video before, my videos before, you can see. There it is, Fed balance sheet versus gold price, too. Um, I think this is another factor right here. And if you take a look, look at the Fed balance sheet, uh, uh, how much it's increased. Gold has yet to catch up with that. And again, I think if you look at the Fed balance sheet, and particularly this chart, I think this is the primary chart, but you look at the Fed balance sheet, you understand that gold and silver are on a roller coaster to the moon. And you understand the only reason it hasn't taken off to the moon is because, again, commercial banks on the silver side, uh, fraudulently keeping the price of silver down with their short positions, never taking a long position. And again, as GATA.org points out with gold, uh, they believe it's governments and, and, and central banks keeping the price of gold down uh, because, again, gold is a canary in the gold mine. So if, if all of a sudden people across the world start seeing gold flying up high, they're going to assume there's something bad happening. So there's a good reason. It's all about perception, folks. Uh, they, they know most of us don't study this stuff. They mo most Americans, most people in the world don't study this stuff. They know this. They throw out sound bites. They use their corporate media buddies uh, to paint a narrative. Everything's okay. Uh, but the fact is it's not. Again, we're in the greatest bubble of all time. Uh, and uh, uh, the Fed, again, you, they're caught, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the Fed is stupid. They don't know what they're doing. But they do. They're on a sinking ship. They've been on a sinking ship since 1913, and uh, even more so, the U.S. dollar, even more so, again, since Nixon took, took us off the gold standard in the 70s. I mean, closed the gold window for good. Uh, we've been on a complete fiat, uh, credit bubble fueled, uh, again, greatest bubble of all time, and it's going to blow up in our faces at some point. And the Fed knows that. The Fed knows that, and I think uh, uh, there's not much they can do about it except try to keep the perception that they have it under control and uh, keep the perception that uh, everything's going to be all right. As I said, I've constantly used the uh, analogy of the Titanic. So a great captain, which Powell and the Fed bankers have seemed to be, a uh, great captain, if the ship's going down, the last thing he wants is the passengers panicking. I mean, even, you know, to the point where it's, it's going down. He doesn't, he, the safest bet for, the, for him is to jawbone that everything's going to be okay. All right? Uh, so they can't, they can't panic and say, the ship's going down. Uh, everyone, uh, they, you know, the Fed has to go out and jawbone these markets up. But again, it's jawboning, folks. Uh, the ultimate path for the Fed and the U.S. dollar and all currencies worldwide are to hell. <laughs> it's a down, instead of the moon, they're going, they're taking a roller coaster ride to hell. Gold and silver people will be taking a roller coaster ride to the moon. Uh, so that's what the currencies are going to do, a roller coaster ride to hell. Well, gave you my opinion on that. Oh, I wanted to show you macro trends, great charts. I'm going to do a, a reverse here. Uh, macro trends, just type in macro trends charts and take a look. They got over two, and it's free, which is really cool. Stock screeners, all this stuff, uh, commodities, precious metals. Um, and th they probably got some of the best precious metal charts out there. The only thing that bugs me a little bit is the, uh, I think they automatically adjust for inflation or something with the dollar value because I can never find the true highs uh, on gold. Uh, uh, like in the 1980s on these charts, they don't show $800 or whatever it was. I think we were 850 gold or 800. They show 600 something as being the highest. Uh, again, not sure why, but uh, the charts are really cool. Uh, I was talking about CFTC uh, this week, and I was talking about COMEX markets and uh, CFTC and how CFTC. I wrote them a, uh, I, I filled out their complaint form, 
even comics, even the comics people had, uh, I think Mr. Redding, I think I mispronounced his name the other day, Mr. Redding uh, from Comics Investigations called me. He was very polite. I was very polite to him. I explained to him, that, you know, that, that the, uh, uh, and I was hoping that someone in the background was listening, but I was explaining to him that, that uh, listen, the, your credibility with uh, the general public out there uh, is, is really declining fast, especially among precious metals people. You know, it used to be a handful of people that were called conspiracy th theories that said that this was happening, and I t explained this to him, and, and uh, I said, now, uh, I said, it's pretty much mainstream, it's in our faces, there's proof that this happens, you know. There's been fines, uh, there's been uh, uh, jail time almost threatened with uh, uh, JP, for example, that was uh, spoofing these markets and got caught. Uh, besides spoofing it, they were also the big short position, uh, and they got away with it. These companies that are too big to fail and too big to jail, um, I am under the belief now that the CFTC, uh, they may be inept, but I really believe they're complicit with this. I really do. Uh, the CFTC is they're complicit with this monkey hammer uh, of gold and silver. Uh, they know what's happening, and again, uh, maybe it's to the benefit of governments or central banks to do this, and they're being told to do this. That's conspiracy on my part. But you have to ask yourself, you know, are they really inept? Is the CFTC really inept, uh, uh, or are they uh, uh, again complicit? Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough call. I, there's people on both sides of that issue here. Um, my opinion is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you look at like Bernie Madoff, what he did, I remember Bernie Madoff telling a story that he would have SEC uh, regulators come. I remember a specific story where he said he had one coming to his office and he was sweating bullets. He, I mean, he, 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 he felt, you know, uh, he was extremely concerned that this is it, it's all up. And, and, and I remember the story he told, he said something that the regulator came in his room and they just started chatting and he probably gave him a cigar or something like that and the regulator went away. Bernie always said that really the regulators let him get away with this. Now SEC is never going to admit that, governments are never going to admit that, and you're not going to read that in corporate news because uh, uh, they're Ponzi's for these people, but no less, speaking of Ponzi's, right? Uh, no less, Bernie did say that regulators uh, were in inept. He, say, he more or less said inept, SEC regulators were inept because they weren't complicit, all right? Um, their ineptness makes them complicit, but uh, Bernie Madoff always said that the SEC was inept. Uh, so maybe I will give the CFTC the benefit of the doubt and consider that they're inept and not complicit. What's your opinion? Let me know in comments below here. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, uh, you know what? I made my point there. How regulators miss Madoff. Um, here's a long thing by Liz here at uh, uh, Forbes, which is corporate news spin. And of course, uh, uh, they're going to say, uh, I don't even know what they're going to say here. I'm just not even going to read. I hate freaking corporate single view narratives uh, that they try to paint. Uh, but again, Madoff, uh, in my opinion, not in my opinion, Madoff said it right himself. They were an app. Uh, in my opinion, I'm not sure. I'm starting to think that they, the CFTC, this particular group, Commodities Future Trading Commission, is inept in my opinion. All right, um, But, uh, gosh, I, I waver back and forth on this. You know, maybe they were told just to leave J.P. Morgan alone uh, back when J.P. was, I, I kind of think that. Wow, boy, I am wavering, aren't I? Uh, you know why I'm wavering? Because I think they are both. I think they are inept, and I also think they're complicit. There you go. Uh, I haven't made my mind which they are more of, uh, but uh, I honestly believe that uh, uh, they've been told to lay off, all right? Again, the big too, too big to fail, too big to jail thing. Um, the only reason J.P. Morgan uh, had to pay that $984, $985 million uh, 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 fine uh, was because they got caught red hand spoofing markets, but, uh, you know, no criminal charges were uh, uh, put forth, and, and again, if anybody else did that, you'd be buried under a prison. I believe the CFTC is uh, uh, complicit in some ways. Maybe not at the lower levels, but at the upper echelons they are for sure. Again, my for sure, in my opinion. Uh, uh, seeking alpha, a case for gold, inflation that was never going to be transitory. Um, kind of an interesting article done by Mike Fay. Uh, it's done in Seeking Alpha. You can read it for free. You just go over to markets, hit gold and uh, precious metals and I'll hit it for you. And you'll see all kinds of cool little commentary and mark, you know, things about gold and silver. I like Seeking Alpha, it's a pretty cool site. Uh, inflation isn't transitory, you know it, I know it. Uh, the now sort of admit they know it. Uh, realistically, the options to fight inflation are very limited and got gold. Uh, as far as inflation isn't transitory, 
you know, all of a sudden inflation is such a big deal. Uh, where has everybody been since, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I don't want to tell you how old I am, I'm middle-aged, so I don't tell you exactly how old I am, but I'm middle-aged, and uh, uh, it's, it's transitory, man. We've, I've seen inflation since I've growing up. I remember, you guys remember when ga the gasoline was less than a dollar. You guys remember when a Coca-Cola was, was uh, what, 25 cents, a quarter like that. Uh, you guys remember when a pack of smokes were 50 cents at most or something like that. And uh, uh, you could go and get, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Uh, inflation isn't transitory. It's been here to stay since 1913, since uh, we, we went to the Federal Reserve System. Uh, and it's been here even in an accelerated form, and that's what gold is showing us, and silver has been showing us since the 1970s. Uh, it's in an accelerated form uh, since uh, Nixon again said that famously we're all Keynesians now and close the gold window. Uh, if you look at the action, price action in gold uh, in a historic charts, you will see uh, that gold has been in a bull market. And listen, hear me out here. Gold, in my opinion, gold has been in a long term cyclical, I'm not sure if that's the right word to use bull market since Nixon took us off the gold window. If you take a look and you look at the big picture and you don't chop it down into 10 year segments or five year segments, the chart is going to the moon. And why is that? Because we are in a credit fueled bubble uh, that, that happens to every country that ends up relying on a fiat currency. The United States is the longest surviving fiat currency in history and gold is reflecting that in its long term bull market here. Um, Good article here, I want you to read it if you get a chance. Uh, not homework, just a suggestion. Nobody likes to do homework, <laughs> as it's been pointed out to me. Clearly, when I used to call it homework, it's not. It's just suggested reading. It'll make you smarter than the average bear. Uh, the more you read, and you don't have to agree with everything you read, too. Uh, the conclusion in this article, so I don't have to read the whole article, it's difficult for me to imagine, I'm gonna read this here, to imagine the Fed can meaningfully reduce any bond buying program why inflation remains as elevated as it is. Absolutely correct. Uh, they're going to they're going to jaw again. Whatever I've been talking about, jawboning. That's what the Fed does the best. Jawbone. All right. They're going to jawbone it, uh, uh, and uh, you know maybe give a little incremental push up in interest rates. In my opinion, uh, but they can't afford to raise interest rates because they will break the U.S. government. They will break a lot. They'll break markets across the board, and it's because they have allowed this. They have allowed this market to go on too long the way it is, and it's kind of like uh, raising a child that's a complete fucking brat. You know what I'm saying? You let them get away with everything, and you let them get away with everything, and then finally, if you're going to pull the plug on something one day, they're going to have a complete fucking implosion. And <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe that's a bad analogy, but uh, let me move on. Who, who will buy bonds that are guaranteed to lose in terms of real yield when the central bank won't? Exactly. Man has a great point there. To fight the unattractive buying bonds, the real yields on those securities would have to be substantially higher than they are now. As we approach a $30 trillion in government debt, it seems increasingly unlikely to me there will be a meaningful increase in rates. I agree 100%. Given the response to Powell's word, the equity markets appear to be expecting otherwise. Uh, I think anyone pricing in higher rates will be disappointed, and I think there's going to be a substantial move to hard assets and commodities, and it becomes more clear that the man behind the curtain doesn't have the power to do anything. Yes, Oz is the man, you know, Powell's the man behind the curtain. Actually, he may not be. There's uh, a bunch of guys in uh, suits, and they have black helicopters and black uh, Suburbans. <laughs> Only kidding. Uh, listen, I, I like SuperSeek. You know, I, I, I kind of popped on it a few times in the last year, and i got to tell you, I've never really read many of the articles. Uh, I should be. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, pointing some things out here. Uh, market updates, COT silver report. This is what I thought was cool is they're doing the uh, COT silver reports on here. Uh, usually I had to rely on looking at other people, uh, other people's articles to uh, see the COT reports for some reason. Never took the time to look to find out where they are. And here they are on SilverSeek. If you like this kind of stuff here, I'll uh, uh, click on that. Uh, COT re futures it shows the large speculators, the commercial banks. Uh, and they uh, uh, manage money, small speculators, open interest, uh, long positions versus the short positions. There you go, commercial banks holding those short silver positions. There are your monkey hammers right there, folks, mostly. And uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good site. I like it. And again, I'm sorry I haven't started. Uh, sorry I haven't used it earlier. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, again, not too many articles I can get into, but I, again, I'll find some articles there and I'll I'll start looking there as well. And I suggest you put that on your bookmark bar, so silverseek.com. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, silverseek.com, that's it. 
And uh, let's take a ZH. There's nothing really about precious metals here. I'll just make my typical uh, comments about, uh, again, whenever I comment about gold and silver, trust me, it has to do with the breakdown of society, the breakdown of economics, the breakdown of politics. You know, that's all good for the price of gold. So all these negative things that I point out and make snarky comments on, um, they are related to the price of metals. And, you know, if they weren't happening uh, and we weren't in a fiat bubble driven society, uh, uh, I probably wouldn't be discussing any of it. So we, we wouldn't even be talking about gold. I probably wouldn't be doing videos because gold wouldn't be that popular because everything was wonderful uh, the way they're trying to paint it. Uh, futures jump, uh, sure, yeah, okay. And uh, this guy, if he makes it through the next election, I'd be surprised. Uh, good article here, uh, Egon von Greyer's uh, Misery or Fortune, The Choice is Yours. Uh, kind of read it over. It talks about things that we've we've spoken about. But again, if you if you have ZH bookmarked on your your uh, uh, tab up top, uh, hit ZH and go hit this article. It's definitely worth a read. Always enjoy his writings. And um, again, uh, oh, that's actually a video too. But uh, they do talk about what they're doing here. But always like the stuff that he writes. I'm on the same page as this gentleman, or we are on the same page with each other politically, uh, economically, it seems. And uh, we're in the same similar business, gold and silver dealers. Uh, you know, give peace a chance here, folks, and see what happens. We don't need more war. Uh, I'd say whatever it takes just to cool down the whole world and get countries to stop fighting. You know, in the words of uh, Rodney King, why can't we all just get along? Oh, there's a guy. There's a real piece of shit right there, in my opinion. Uh, again, if you think about what he did, if he is indeed guilty of that, uh, who, what is it, uh, David, uh, who's that comedian? Uh, Dave Chappelle calls him uh, uh Ju Ju Juicy Smollett. <laughs> so, uh, Juicy Smollett really did an awful, awful thing. And the fact that he won't even admit it on the stand, even though he's caught red handed. Again, let's wait and see how it pans out. I don't want to say someone's guilty for sure until the jury said it. And uh, we'll wait for the jury in this particular. Uh, and even that may not necessarily mean they were guilty or not. But uh, all the evidence points that, uh, wow. And, and what does this have to do with gold and silver? It has to do with the breakdown of society. And the breakdown of society will only hasten the breakdown of our economic situation, the breakdown of, uh, you know, the breakdown of society. It's good for the price of gold. Uh, boy, that, I don't hate to sound that way, but it's true, you know. Uh, so all this stuff kind of plays into uh, precious metal prices are just going to continue to go up. I mean, that's the way I read it. Uh, I don't, how do you read it? Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, printing and borrowing always ends badly. Gosh, this article is uh, probably exactly what we were talking about. Uh, good. They need to arrest more of those people. That was just an awful thing. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just move along here because I've got a big day ahead of me. Uh, I'd like to thank all the Wall Street apes that uh, have liked and uh, subscribed to my videos and comment. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Reddit Wall Street Silver Group for uh, allowing me to uh, post my videos out there and not censoring them, not cutting them off, and, and allowing me to post my opinion and such. Uh, I, that I really appreciate. And I appreciate the fact that the, uh, they managed to uh, get such a large group of people all passionate about the same thing, which is silver under one roof on the internet. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at uh, yesterday's video, which was pretty explanatory. Gold and silver IRA is illegal now. Uh, as you know, anybody that m got their own IRA and, and, and tried to hold it at their home based on some bad advice they got from different companies, uh, they're in big trouble right now. So I hope they're working on it. That was the point of my video is if you didn't know about that, you need to know now and unwind that position so you don't end up uh, like those folks do, losing half of your retirement. Uh, buy bad advice too, go figure. Um, let's take a look at the uh, comments out here and then we're going to move along real quick and end this little video here. We'll end this show. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching all you folks here, Jim and everybody. Uh, Joey, thank you. Um, uh, Stephen, you pointed out a very good point. I, I kept saying third party risk. Don't let other people hold your gold because it's third party risk. Third party risk is just something that, uh, gosh, it, uh, it was just kind of buried in my mind, but you may be very right. Would it be second party risk? Um, I'm going to look, or first party, I, I, I think I asked myself that question one time. Why, why am I saying third party risk? I looked up the definition, as you saw yesterday, in third party risk, and it wasn't very specific about what I was talking about. But maybe, uh, uh, like you said here, grandma, maybe that would be a, a more appropriate term would be second party. Uh, I'm going to look into that when I get a little chance. And uh, you know how I'll remember, because I will use the term third party again. And then I'll say, oh, damn it. I got <laughs> uh, Stephen, 
Thank you very much. Excellent point. Appreciate that. Uh, and as far as helping you understand, eh, uh, I'm just going to try to figure it out. <laughs> I'm not quite sure myself. Again, I've always used the term third-party risk, but maybe a more proper term would be second party. I'll look into it. Uh, maybe if you get a chance, look into it too and let me know in the comment today. Um, yes, Joey, that is absolutely true. Uh, it regards complaints, I'm in marketing. I learned from experience that for every complaint offered, you can count on another 12 who are equally pissed off at the same level. Any good business knows how to pay attention and swivel to adapt, uh, except for government. And you're absolutely correct there. Um, government just doubles down on stupid. They don't fix shit. They just double down on stupid. Uh, what you don't see in other price of comics could drop to 10. I would be paying 35 roughly for an ounce of silver unless I want to buy five thousand dollars. Um, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about there. If you're paying, if silver went to ten dollars and you're paying thirty-five dollars an ounce, now that could happen if silver went to if the whole world collapses and an economic collapse tomorrow in a big way, you could see ten dollars silver, but you certainly will never buy it at uh, ten dollars. And you're right, you might be paying thirty-five. But I think what you're trying to say here is that if the price of silver goes down like it has from thirty to twenty, that you're you're gonna have to still pay high prices. That's not true. Uh, right now, currently, even at these 22, uh, mid-22 range silver, uh, you can pick up silver for spot plus four bucks or less. There's even some stuff out there for spot plus three or less, which is a great deal. Uh, of course, it's not Silver Eagles, which are running 33, 35 and some stupid money. Overpriced, love the product, overpriced. Uh, but there are great deals out there for sub four dollar silver. And oh, I said I was gonna talk about what the best deals out there. Well, uh, 100 ounce bars are a great deal. They're under $4 over spot, probably more like the spot plus three and a quarter. Uh, one ounce bars are 375 or less over spot. Uh, and uh, 10 ounce bars are probably 350 and less over spot. 90% is too expensive, stay away from it. And there's some other esoteric products out there you can buy as well. As far as the best deals in gold, uh, again, I told you guys I was gonna tell you what the best deals are. I do it right now in the comments section. Uh, best deals in gold are uh, uh, bars right now. There's still spot plus 80, uh, and you can also pick up Krugerrands, and I think Krugerrands a little bit delayed, but we have them on hand. Uh, Krugers and Maple Leafs, uh, and they're at spot plus 95 or less, which is a good deal. I think Gold Eagles are still spot plus 122, and Buffaloes are in that same range. Uh, not terribly overpriced, but still, I think bars are a better deal because you can buy a gold bar and an ounce of silver for the same price you could buy American Eagle for. And I'd rather have the extra ounce of silver than the premium and an Eagle. That's my opinion. Uh, so there you go. There's the best deals out there as far as gold and silver goes. Um, I advertise to be at Max JM and SD Bullion, which are the three larger bullion dealers out there. They may not be the cheapest, uh, but they are large and they're reputable. Uh, and I advertise to beat them. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, if you don't live in my area, you don't live in South Florida. As I've always said, I don't ship anything out of state, so you need to find yourself a good local dealer. And I don't think that's too tough to do. You guys should be able to find a handsome, smart, fair guy like myself in your city, or at least somewhere in your state. Take the drive if you have to. Uh, hey, thanks for commenting there, uh, 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 Mr. Hall. Appreciate it. Ameripride, nice to see you there with your your surprise look. <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh, thank you for watching, Stephen Peck. Um, please do a video on Kinesis Gold and Silver 101 allocated digital metals. No storage fees. Pay 6.9%. Spend on a debit card. Redeemable just over spot price. Instant transactions. Fully audited. Vaults are all around there. Hold your and it's fully insured. Makes crypto obsolete. Uh, SNK uh, 714, I actually did kind of look at that. It makes me nervous. Again, Andrew McGuire, the only reason I consider the operation legit, because I like Andrew McGuire. I've been reading his stuff for a long time, but it still makes me nervous, man. It's, it's based in Singapore. Uh, there's some regulatory issues where they can't do it here in the U.S. Uh, again, based in Singapore, it's got crypto involved. They're offering a patent. No storage fees, pays 6.9%. I don't know, man. And I did read their perspective, and I did read, you know, it does say they pay no storage fees, that, but it doesn't explain exactly how they attain all this stuff and what your insurance is. And again, uh, they may be the greatest thing since sliced bread as far as storing your gold somewhere, folks, Kinesis Gold, but I don't recommend it. I, you, something could happen to them. Uh, and again, this is what Oh, I'm going to call it second party. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to call it second party. This is what, 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 what I previously called third party risk. I'm going to call it second party now. This is what second party risk would look like, is that Kinesis is holding your metal, or your grandma holds your metal, and something bad happens to them. It's gone. It's gone. Gone, gone, gone. The nice thing about holding it yourself, as long as you stash it well, and I, people say, well, I, I don't have a place to stash my gold. Uh, you know, you can put a uh, uh, million dollars worth of gold kilo bars at the current prices. You could stick them in a two-slice toaster, hollow out the toaster, and you can stick it in a two-slice toaster, literally. Silver, 
a little bit more. I mean, it does take up a little more space, but come on, man, you can't hide it. And even if it did take up more space, think about how much weight is involved as well. Uh, but heck, you can hide silver. You can hide anything in your house if you use your freaking head. Even in an apartment you don't own, you can hide stuff. Um, and that certainly is gonna eliminate your, your second party risk quite a bit more. Uh, hell, even if you have a fire, your, your silver and gold will still be there. It'll just look like a puddle. So <laughs> avoid third party risk, second party risk, I'm sorry. I'm gonna figure out which one it is. Uh, and again, I wouldn't uh, have anything to do with uh, this. And they may be the greatest, most reputable company. And again, big fan of uh, Andrew McGuire, but I am not a fan at all of having other people hold your gold and silver. In my opinion, there's no need for it, period. Um, too much risk, no need. Uh, thanks for not being <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Uh, Z, nice to see you there. And uh, yeah, uh, man, there's always, there's always people trying to figure out ways of avoiding IRS and uh, reporting income and all that stuff. There's always people out there trying to do that. But can you really blame them, I guess, and for the most part? You know, uh, you know nobody likes taxes. Nobody likes taxes. So, uh, and if someone says they like taxes, uh, they're full of shit. Uh, hey, thanks for watching, Z. Uh, Michael, thanks for watching again. Uh, you think uh, MZ is? I'm kind of thinking Elon's way better P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum had personality. Uh, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg has none whatsoever. He might as well be a robot. Uh, thanks for watching, Michael. Um, I have PM IRA from several years, but do not hold the metals. The company I set up would not allow me to, and they have kept the storage until I sell the metals off for cash. I pay a small fee for storage, uh, which is about $200 for year, uh, per year. Uh, of the weight of the metals I own, so more weight, it costs more. Um, yeah, you know, again, uh, if you have to own uh, an IRA and you have, you're going to put precious metals in it. I mean, I guess that's the way to do it. Find a good allocated company like Sprott. But again, uh, it's expensive. I my Sprott account. I bought Sprott when they first came out with their PSLV. I bought them when they first came, literally when they first came out. Uh, and silver prices were around 12, 15 bucks an ounce, went up to 17 bucks an ounce. I think it went in almost high as 20. And that's, it would, my, my, my Sprout was trading for about that same value. Uh, I, I ignored it. I kind of thought it was like a gold bar or silver bar in my safe. I could ignore it and come back and still be worth more, uh, or at least the same or more. No, I forgot about fees. I forgot that Sprout has fees. And the Sprout fees over, over, over a decade really ate my account up pretty much. So not good for long term, in my opinion. Uh, even $200 per year, I mean, multiply that times 10 years, that's 2,000 uh, bucks. That's a lot of money, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but actually, that's probably a good buck, 200 bucks per year, the weight. Again, I don't know how much metal you own. Hey, thanks for uh, commenting, Tella. Strat, appreciate that. Uh, Dave, appreciate you commenting as well. I presume you sent me and reported errors at the valuation. Uh, I'm glad that some of you guys are thinking about this, and uh, I appreciate you commenting as well. Uh, when there's a predator, it is feeding time, that is for sure, sir. Well, if you like my videos, please hit that uh, like button right there, and uh, dislike if you don't dislike. That's sad, man. I'm, I'm really pissed that they took off that dislike. I didn't mind it. You know, even if I got more than I thought I was deserved, I didn't mind it at all. I think there's something fair and equitable about uh, giving people the choice to like or dislike something. Now we're living in a world where you can only like something? How fucked up is that, man? <laughs> really, I'm sorry. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzma with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. And uh, if you need something, again, I only deal in South Florida. You have to come to my store to buy and sell with me. Uh, I don't do anything through the mail or anything. So if you don't live in my area, I recommend you find a good local dealer. Please do that. Uh, keep that money local, folks. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.